Hey, what's up guys? This is going to be my Bleach Chapter 636 review. And this was an insane fucking chapter, guys. Like, at least with what happened with Kimpachi and kind of what's going on with Perdina and we get to find out its abilities. So, I want to start out with Kimpachi because that was kind of like the starting portion of the chapter. Kimpachi's arm gets completely just contorted and shit. His right arm. And... Then he rips it off in epic, like, Kimpachi fashion. Like, I know Bleach has, like, like, Taite Kubo has a thing with, with, you know, arms and getting sliced off. And Kimpachi's never gotten a limb sliced off, to my knowledge. Maybe outside of filler, I don't know about filler. But, still, at the same time, Kimpachi just rips it off in, like, one of the most memorable now Kimpachi moments, where he rips off his own arm and then takes the sword, which his dead arm is still gripping, that and it rips off his fingers. Like, on the dead arm. I'm just like, Kimpachi with no emotion whatsoever. It's just, you know, it's the stuff that I like to see from Kimpachi. He doesn't, you know, no pain whatsoever from, or no reaction from the pain. But then we get into the next portion where Kimpachi is having dialogue between Mayuri and everyone, well, everyone else, you know, Nemu and Yumichika and Ikaku are having their own dialogue, which I'm glad we saw them this chapter because we didn't see them last chapter, which was kind of disappointing, to be honest. But we get to see Nemu, so that's cool. I mean, we never get to really see Nemu. But then, you know, Mayuri's having the back and forth with Kampachi, and it's funny because Kampachi. Or, or Mayuri's just like, are you just talking out loud again? And then uh, Kimpachi's just like, how am I supposed to, you know, sl uh, kill this thing if I can't just slash it? Because Mayuri's suggesting, you know, to wait a second. And then Kimpachi next panel is like, oh, sorry, I was just talking to myself. And goes over to Prudina and try and slashes him. From what it looks like, it was kind of unclear from the panels. I watched some other guys' reviews just to see the consensus on this. But I think what happened is that Perdina, like, Kimpachi hit Perdina, and then Perdina hit Kimpachi, but then Mayuri came behind him, stabbed him in the back, prevented the nerves from getting to Kimpachi, and sedated Kimpachi to save Kimpachi's uh, for another fight, because Mayuri, you know, he thinks he, he's like, I'm gonna be able to use all these medicines on you, and it's gonna be fucking awesome. And so, per, uh, Kimpachi's probably not gonna be needed now, I mean, he... He was there to show the ability, so Mayuri didn't have to, you know, get fucked over by that. And so I hope he's get he gets saved for another battle. I'd love to see him against another Sterner, just all out, just something, you know. But then we get into the next part where Mayuri uses Fear Factor 4, which is like a paralysis that, like, pretty much you have to, like, cover your ears. That's why Namu tells Ikaku and Yumichika, cover your ears Where's Hanatro, guys? Didn't Hanatro come with them, or did he go back to the other group? Whatever. But, I and then they cover their ears, Kimpachi gets paralyzed, he's like, Kuratsuki, you bastard! But, you know, it was the smartest thing to do, because, you know, Kimpachi, all he know, knows to do is, you know, physical, close-up combat. He doesn't have, like, even a De Getsuga Tensho, you know, a ranged attack, from what I know. Or from what we know so far, maybe he does with Nozarashi, which I never, I didn't understand why he just didn't get out Nozarashi in that. Because a lot of Shinigami in the past have just, like, taken out their Shikai immediately. And is there something special about Kimpachi's Shikai? Does he, just because he just got it, like, he can't use it that much? Maybe it takes, like, a lot of strength out of him? But he doesn't seem to use it that much. Or maybe he's not used to it yet, you know, because he's always had the regular, his regular sealed uh, sword. And he's always fought with that, so maybe he's used to that. And maybe in the future we'll get more Nozarashi out the gate. Who knows? But, and now we get into the last point where we find out Perdina's ability. Which, you know, it's the compulsory, and it makes sense. But what happens is that he uses his nerves, which are those things that are coming out of him, to attack, or to, like, you know, strike the enemy, and it invades their, uh, the enemy's nerves with Reishi, and he gets to control their nerves with Reishi, and the compulsory comes from the movements that he makes the nerves do are very compulsive, and they're like, oh. And now, lastly, we're gonna pretty much see what Perdina looks like, because either Mayuri made a, uh, uh got 
Perdino or is that uh, thing by Kampaji? I'm not sure yet. It was interesting, but in the beginning of the chapter, my Yuri described him as, a, or Perdina as a metamorphosis, which if you look at that, <coughs> a change of form or nature of a thing or person into a completely different one by natural or supernatural means. That's the definition of metamorphosis. So I feel like it's still, it's still possible that like Perdina is not, just like a fucked up, you know, just like something under there, because I feel like that'd be like way too obvious. Like there should be not really a twist, but you know, unexpected. That's kind of like what Bleach is like, well, at least with the eyes and thing, but either way, that was the chapter. Really good chapter. Not going to lie. It was just a fast chapter. I was really sad that One Piece wasn't this week, but Either way, I mean, I'll probably have, like, a One Piece discussion sometime during this week just so I can do something One Piece related. I'm thinking about reviewing Dragon Ball uh, Super Manga when that comes out or episodes. So maybe look out for that whenever that comes out. But until next time, guys, see you guys later, and thanks for watching as always. Mm -hmm.